Every day I made the cat and I drove, I've been married a long time ago. Will I get copyrighted for that? Hey, what's up? Yeah, that's the intro. I think that's the one we're gonna go with. Honestly, I think I'm gonna get to the point where once we start making merch, I'm gonna have a shirt that says, hey, what's up? And that's just gonna be it. I feel like that'd be such a cool thing, just walking around with a shirt that says, hey, what's up? Because someone will either say, hey, what's up, like back to you, or just be confused as to why you have a shirt that says, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down a couple different Spider-Man poses you can do when you are out in your suit cosplaying for a photo shoot. Spider-Man is such a cool character to cosplay, and I've seen thousands of people do it all around the world. He's my favorite character to cosplay, and if any of my social media hasn't shown you that, I, I like to cosplay Spider-Man. I do it quite often. Cosplaying Spider-Man is very fun. Obviously, I would know because I like 94% of everything I post. Somebody do the math on that. No, please don't. Anyway, over the years, I've learned a decent amount of poses to do as Spider-Man, or I've learned different ways to replicate his poses or switch them up. Because obviously, everybody knows some of the basic poses that Spider-Man does, such as like a basic perch hanging off of a wall or a ledge, climbing something or jumping in the air. But I also know there's a lot of young beginner cosplayers out there who want to cosplay Spider-Man or maybe do cosplay Spider-Man and just kind of get confused on the poses that they should do when they have to drop down for a photo or their pose for whatever angle photo they want. That's why I'm here. I got you. I'm going to be breaking down and showing you a couple of very easy poses that anybody can do to get you into the world of cosplaying as Spider-Man. Now, quick preface. Number one, these are specific to Spider-Man as a character. So if you're dressing up as Batman, I probably don't recommend you do these poses. You could if you would like to, but I don't really think they would Actually, you know what? If there's a Batman cosplayer out there, please do these poses and send me the photos because I, I'll share them too, because I think that'd be awesome. Anyway, poses are specific to character to try to capture their mood, their essence, and their vibe. And these are Spider-Man poses. So they're tailored and catered to Spider-Man characters. Preface number two, these are beginner poses. So if you've been cosplaying Spidey for a while, you know the basic poses, that's awesome. But this video is gonna be targeted more towards the people who are just starting out cosplaying or just put on their Spider-Man suit or just wanna learn a couple of the poses before they go out for a shoot. But that also means that pretty much anybody can learn it with just a couple basic steps. Step one, before I go out and actually do the poses, I'm going to change my outfit because right now I have a pretty loose shirt on. So I'm going to switch to more of a compression shirt so you can see the way my body is forming, the way my muscles move, the way I'm angled, the way I'm posed. So you can see everything and not have to wonder which way you should be moving or turning. Funny enough, I think I actually have a Spider-Man compression shirt. I do. All right, so... Before we get into those poses, it is very important and crucial that I let you know, you should definitely stretch. I cannot tell you how many times I've been on a photo shoot, drop down to do a pose, and I just pulled something. Definitely wanna make sure you're stretching out. So we're gonna do a couple Spidey stretches today. I should probably cue like the, the calming Lamaz music, right? We're gonna call this section Stretching with Spidey. That should be an entire YouTube channel on its own. Uh, just start off like this, nice pose, good form like that. I'm gonna go down. One to the right between the ankle and the knee and you should feel it right there in your hip again the other side feel it in your hip like this stretch out that lower back right now this might seem a little pointless and you might feel dumb doing it but i'm in a spider-man mask in the middle of the day in a public parking lot doing it so if anyone should feel dumb it's me second stretch you want to do is a bit of a seesaw right legs out like this again i'm just gonna rock that good and rock down the other side dude i definitely chose look at this i chose the whitest sock possible to go with my pants it's definitely laundry day. Anyway, do a couple more of those. Get down as low as you can. You'll feel it here in your inner quad and then out here on your outer quad as well. And then most importantly, we're gonna do a couple squats. Get those knees loosened up. One, there we go. Two. Don't do too many because you don't wanna get a whole workout in. You just wanna stretch out. Do some butt kicks. Stretch your hamstrings out, your calves out. And trust me, I know I'm kind of playing this off as a bit of a joke, but this is actually very important. You never want to be on a photo shoot or at a convention and someone's like, hey, can I get a photo? You're like, sure, and you pop down, you just don't go back up. All right, now that we got that done. Pose number one, this is probably the most basic one you could ever do. We've seen it all over the place. I'm gonna do a basic perch. A basic perch is fun because you can do it pretty much on any surface you want and you can really switch up the variety of your shots. Basic perch is like this. And it's really fun because you can do it on a multitude of different places. You can do it from different angles, different locations. You can do it on a flat surface, depending on your balance. You can do it on a pole, do it on the side of a building. You probably shouldn't though. You can do it pretty much anywhere that you can stand up. Let's break down how to do it. So obviously this one's always heavy on the knees. Stretch those knees out. Step number one, stand up straight, nice and easy. Put your feet together like this, so that they're basically hugging each other, right? Put whatever hand you want down like this, whether it's your dominant hand, non-dominant hand. I prefer to have my non-dominant, but it's up to you. Non-dominant hand. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a squat like this, 
all the way down. Then when we get down here, you should notice that your heels are picked up. You're no longer flat footed. Your toes are touching the ground. Your heels are not. That's good. What you're going to do from here is you're going to take your knees, pop them out just a little bit, and you're going to roll over your toes when you do that. You'll feel your toes roll out like that. So feet together, hand out, drop, knees out, right? Those knees out are very important. You can get a couple different variations of this pose. You've got the basic perch down like this. You can have the one hand down. You can swap hands out. You can do a resting pose like this, or you can start getting really creative with it. And you can start using the other muscles in your body to kind of correlate with it. That basic perch goes down. What if I want to be more intimidating? I could drop my back down like this, have my hand follow, and my other hand out like that. Notice how my legs never moved. My legs stayed the same. Whether I was in a basic perch like this, relaxed perch, or a more intimidating perch. It doesn't matter, my legs are staying the same and that's what's important. This one definitely works out your quads and your calves. So again, stretch before you do it. We'll break it down once more. Feet together, hand out, hand goes in the center, knees go out, and then from here you can swap it out. You wanna go down like this, do that. You wanna be up like that, do like that. Be more of a relaxed perch, kinda of like this. More that curious perch looking down. Whatever you want, but you got that basic perch down and you can throw in some variety along the way. That's the fun part about a lot of these poses is you can definitely throw in a lot of variety. Our second pose is gonna be off of the basic perch. So the reason I wanted to teach you the basic perch first is because it is a basic perch and it helps formulate every single move. It's like once you learn that move, it helps push you into all the other moves and you'll notice that they all kind of work together. For our second move, we're gonna go for a wide stance. So we're gonna drop down to our basic perch again, right? From this point, pick any leg, right or left. I normally go for my right leg, but it's up to you. Whatever leg you choose, you're using your opposite hand. So if I'm using my right leg, I'm gonna use my left hand to poke out. So I'm gonna put my left hand out. From my basic perch, my right leg is gonna shoot out that way, like this. Now you'll notice when you do that, your weight shifts. And now your weight can no longer be in the center. Because in your basic perch, your weight is in the center. When you shift your leg out, your weight has to contribute to that, so you're not falling over. So go like that, your weight is instantly gonna shoot this way, and that's okay. I just wanted to say that in case anybody like shoots out and they're trying to keep their weight centered, don't worry about it. If you're shooting this way, same thing. Your weight is gonna shoot that way. You wanna make sure you are stabilized no matter what you're doing. So whatever leg you choose, pop that leg out. Now you wanna make sure that your knee and your foot have as much strength as they possibly can. So keep your foot not like this. You see this? That's bad. Keep your foot flat on the ground like this. Keep your knee nice and strong like that. You wanna make sure you have this nice solid angle of good support that you're holding yourself up with. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing that, you can easily shift your weight to this side and keep your hands off and you can maintain that pose, right? Because if you don't and you do something like this and there's no weight to it and you shift over, you'll start to fall. These poses are not only flashy and look cool, but they're very practical. You have to make sure that you are doing them in a practical way so you don't hurt yourself. So we keep that leg out, keep a nice arc angle right there, foot flat on the ground. Now you have a basic wide stance like that. And if you wanna switch out, just like that, see how my foot is flat, my knee has a solid arc to it, it's good, it's strong, and you can go out like that. Now, as I said before with the basic perch, once you get the basic pose down, you can start swapping it out. If my left leg is out, if I wanna use my right hand, I can. Or if I wanna use my left hand, I can. If I wanna go up like this, look around like that. If I want to swap out, go up, maybe go down, maybe take both hands, go over the knee, go over this knee, no matter what you want to do. But notice how the legs stay the same place, right? The legs stay strong. Break it down nice and quick. Once more, we got our basic perch. We know how to do that. Hop into the basic perch, pick a leg. And when you pick a leg, you're going to shoot it out. Your other legs didn't go to the center. Boom, just like that. And then you have a whole bunch of different poses that you can do and you can move around in based off of these. See that, how you can just shift your weight like that. So you don't even have to, you can do that to shift the weight or you can just actually shift your weight like that. Now, do you remember when I told you to do your stretches? We did stretches like this. Yeah, notice how that same stretch is coming back into play right here. See, I wasn't crazy for making you do those stretches because here you're gonna feel it a lot in your calves. What I like so much about this pose is it's very wide, it's very dynamic. It changes the basic perch, which is nice and stoic, into something that has a lot more dynamic nature to it and you can easily put some action in there. But a lot of times what Michael and I will do on a shoot is he'll, we'll pick a spot and he'll say, hey, go jump to that spot. I'll get on the spot and I'll always, always jump to a basic perch first. He'll get some shots, I'll hear the camera click and then immediately, I'll swap into a wide stance like this because it looks more dynamic. It looks more action driven, like something's happening versus Spider-Man just 
watching. Like I said, you wanna to try to capture the mood of what you're doing in the poses, and it's all about your attitude with it. Pose number three. Again, it's gonna start off with that basic perch. This one is gonna be a bit more of a beginner perch. So let's say I taught you the first two moves and you're struggling to learn them. You can't quite get the balance of the basic perch yet, right? Or you can't quite get the weight distribution of this one. That's okay. And this is one that I like to do more casually. I know how to do the basic perch to wide stance, but maybe I won't, I don't want to, right? Maybe I'm in a spot where I just want to do a different pose that looks a little bit more casual, but still has Spider-Man. Now some characteristics of Spider-Man poses, obviously, you're always going to be bending those knees. Always want to make sure you're, you're down and about like this. Hey, little crab walk. Can't believe people actually watch my videos. <laughs> I've been married a long time ago. Well, I get copyrighted for that. Anyway, if you struggle with that basic perch, this is one that you can start with. Everybody knows how to take a knee, right? Pick any leg, either one you want, drop down, take a knee, right? You just have your flat foot down, your knee on the ground. What you're gonna do is you're gonna combine a basic knee with the perch. We know how the perch is like this and the legs are out wide, right? So you're gonna take that same application and put it on that knee. Pick a knee, go down on that knee, pick a leg. Pick a strong spot for that leg to stand and your knee, pump it out like this. Have a strong stance. You see that angle? Make sure you have a very wide angle with your knees. Your back foot should be arced up. It should be perched on that toe. And now your upper body plays a big role. You have the basic knee down. Your upper body can do something like this, something like that. So imagine it on the top of a building or a parking garage or something. And instead of jumping, you know, like into a basic perch, you just kind of jump down into a knee like that. Now, if you want to up the ante a little bit more, this back leg plays a good role on that. Notice on my back leg, it's just on my toe. What you can do, you can pop it up even higher, get that knee off the ground, and now you're like this. So now it's kind of like a perch knee. So it's kind of like a training perch almost. Your feet aren't all the way together. You're just kind of floating around, right? And what this does is it adds a little bit more calm, cool, suave character into the pose, rather than like the super dynamic poses or the ready for a fight, you know, like that. Something like this. It just, it's more of a cool, casual, collected pose to kind of add some variation to it. This one's more simple side. Anybody can do this. Anyone can actually do all of these. So if you'll notice, I've only taught you three poses, the basic perch, the wide perch, and the casual knee, right? Those three will get you very far because as I've said, you can add those variations. One pose can be actually five poses because this basic perch, that's one pose, right? We taught you one, but technically you have one, two, three, four, five, six in there, depending on how you want to swatch it out. You have the wide stance. You have one, two, three, four, five, and then you can swap out the other side and you can have another five right there. It's all about just switching up how you want to do it and where your weight distribution is going. So in theory, if I've taught you these three poses, you technically know like 12 to 15 poses because all you have to do is focus on the basic pose. You add variation in with your top half. All right, so now that we've learned those three poses, we got our basic perch, we got our wide perch like that, and we got our basic knee, right? We learned our basic poses and we can swap between every little pose that we might want to do with those poses. They open the door for poses, everywhere. Once you learn those, you're pretty much set and you're doing good. Well, let's talk about some things that will help you in the long run. There's little tricks and tips that you can do in the poses to make them that much better. Let's focus on our foot. Obviously having your foot flat like this is for stability. If we're doing our wide pose, we need to have one of those flat to make sure we're stable. But what about this other foot? Let's take our wide pose like this and we have this, right? Now notice this difference. Not much of a difference, right? Except in my leg. Let me switch my hand so you can see. You see that? That little pop. And now here it is in the basic perch. Well, on our toes, now we're up. Now, what is this gonna do? So if I have Michael posed right there and he's timing down a photo, he's like three, two, one, go. I'll pop up like that. And what that does is it reduces the surface area that is touching the ground. Essentially, it's just adding on a flare. It doesn't have any sort of practical use. It just makes it look more like Spider-Man because everybody knows Spider-Man has perfect balance. So he wouldn't need to sit on a flat foot like this. And when you're perched, your feet might be touching the ground. You want to make sure that the heel is perched all the way up like that. And your feet are as close together as they can be. So it looks as though you are perched on as little surface area as possible. And then of course, without hands, it gets kind of tricky to do that, but you can do it. And you can go back down to your toes. To add a little bit more flair into that photo, you can pop up that one toe just a touch and you'll get a different result. Now you don't have to do that. It's definitely gonna work the calves, but it's fun. 
A second thing I want to talk about is your hands and your arms. Everyone knows Spider-Man can stick to a wall, but he doesn't stick like this. He sticks like that, right? He's not on, he's not flat on the wall. He's on his fingertips. A lot of people, what I'll see is you'll be down like this and they'll just do this. You want to make sure you're not flat handing the ground. Again, it's just a little trick to boost the pose up a little bit more. Instead of flat handing, you want to make sure you're on your fingertips. You're always like that. Always stay on those fingertips. No matter what you're doing, you're staying on those fingertips. And what you might notice is you might say, hey, Miles, I can't do that because I need to hold myself up with my hand. You shouldn't need to hold yourself up with your hand. You should have a pose that's strong enough where you don't need your hands and the hand is just down as a flare. You get what I'm saying? Now, we're gonna take that and we're gonna boost it just a step farther. So now that you have this basic pose, we're gonna focus on the other joints the wrist and the elbow. Look at the difference between this pose and this pose. Which one looks more dynamic? This one or this one? Probably this one, right? It's because I'm using my joints, popping my elbow out very far. And in a response to that, I'm popping my wrist up very high like that. So instead of doing this, I'm doing this. I'm popping my wrist up very high and my elbow out very far. And then my shoulder goes down to follow that like that. So it adds on just that extra bit of flare. Essentially what I'm trying to say with these extra flares of when you're popping your heel up a little bit farther or you're using your elbow, your wrist and your shoulder as different variables, you're utilizing all of your joints. You have a lot of joints in your body that you can be using. And with the Spider-Man pose, you're technically limited to just the knees and the ankle, right? You're limited to those ones. So the top half of your body is very important in adding on that dynamic pose and adding on that attitude. Like I talked about earlier, if you want to be more calm and collected, you show those are kind of back you're looking around you want to be more intimidating your shoulders are down and in response to that my elbow and my wrist pop down and pop out utilize all of your joints again like i talked about you can have a bunch of different variations so you pop down to this basic perch and you have your hand down like this automatically i can switch the pose by popping my elbow out and going down and then i have two more joints i can do this 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 it's like a character customization screen you're just picking the pose that you want to be in and utilizing every little aspect of your body. Those little minute movements are way more important than you might think. Because again, we only learned three different poses, but with those little minute movements, moving every little joint that you have available at your disposal, you add on a flurry of new poses, so you're not doing the same pose every single time. Another thing to keep in mind is your head. Your head plays a big role in how you want the pose to look. If I wanna be something more playful, I'll keep my head kind of up, cheerful, looking around. Maybe I'll go like to the side a little bit, play some character into it. But if I want to be more intimidating, instantly my head goes down, my shoulders go up, my back goes up. I'll look around like that. More intimidating of a pose, your shoulders go down and your head pops up. Like that, you're looking around, you're scanning, you're ready to fight someone. Your head plays a huge role. Similar to how artists draw heads on a character, it depends on how you want that expression to look. We're limited to only having a mask, so we have to kind of utilize the expressions available with our neck and head shapes. So obviously looking straight is different than looking up and looking down, looking to the left, angled, curved, left, all like that, right? All of those convey different emotions and they're gonna work better with different poses. So you're just gonna wanna play around with those and see what works best for you for what you're trying to do. Obviously, if I'm trying to be more playful like this, I'm not gonna have a super intimidating like head because then I'll look like a stupid bobblehead, right? Or if I'm trying to be more on the intimidating side, I'm not gonna have a super lax head, you know? I'm gonna be more down like that. Every single part of your body plays a role in how the pose is going to look and the feeling that you're going to admit through that pose. Anyway, I hope that I helped at least somebody learn a new Spider-Man pose or maybe a new avenue of Spider-Man poses. I'm pretty sure people knew these already because everyone has seen Spider-Man, we know those poses. But these were just three basic poses to get you started and then just a whole variety of poses under each one of those three. Anyway, I'm gonna sum it up because like I said, I'm in a public parking lot and people are looking at me, but what's up? But I don't really care, you know? You only live once, and I'd rather live that life having fun in a spider man map. So thank you for 15,000 subscribers. You guys are crazy. That's awesome. Never would imagine we got this far, but here we are. Let's keep going. Let's keep pushing. 20K is next. I have a surprise at 20K, so make sure you're here. Subscribe and keep me on post notifications. Do good things. Peace and love, and I'll see you in the next one. Wait, I can't do my... What if I just... Peace! Yeah,